Our next speaker is Dr. Wayne Myrie, who is a researcher from the Coconut Industry Board. He holds a degree in a PhD in biochemistry, and he is in charge of the molecular biology and plant pathology laboratories at the Coconut Industry Board, and has participated in an EU Horizon 2020 project called TrophySafe between 2017 and concluded in 2021. He will speak with us today on his uh, experience working with this project. Dr. Myrie, welcome. Well, thank you very much. Are you hearing me now? Yes, we are. Okay, thank you very much um, for the, the invitation to make a presentation to you today. All protocols observed. Uh, okay, you're seeing me now. All protocol observed. Um, my presentation will be on the EU Horizon 2020 project, uh, uh, TropiSafe project that was undertaken um, here in Jamaica with our um, partners uh, across the, the globe. Um, the Horizon 2020 project was, uh, is a, uh, the TropiSafe project was an EU funded um, project, uh, research and innovation pro program um, for between 2014 and 2020. Uh, with a budget of nearly 80 um, um, million euros or billion euros. Uh, sorry. Um, so the it's a it's a financial instrument, um, and um, the coordinator of this project project, uh, the TropiSafe project, in invited. Uh, various participants uh, to and various persons of interest who actually were working um, in the field to actually come together to 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 look at this uh, project to see if it could be implemented across um, the various um, stakeholder groups. So the grant application has five uh, step process. Um, we find suitable call for proposal, find project partners or applied as individual, create an account on the EU um, portal, register your, org this is general, register your organization on the Horizon 2020 pro um, portal and submit your project proposal to the European Union. More specifically, um, for our grant application process, um, capable and interesting scientists um, you know, in the disease areas which we were trying to focus our attention, was asked to participate and to indicate their willingness to collaborate. A consortium of scientists uh, with various skills and and um, knowledge and 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 um, know-how. Were they they were this consortium was assembled. Uh, concept notes on the proposed crops and specific issues. Um, was written and circulated uh, for suggested inputs. Um, initial uh, project was submitted indicating the consortium intention to work with the uh, uh, suggested uh, topics. Um, and the full proposal, after an indication was given that a full proposal could would be entertained. After subsequently a full proposal was submitted, um, the, it was examined carefully and the, the permission or approval was given um, by the Horizon 2020 European um, Union for this project to, to be funded. Um, and uh, subsequently, after which uh, full proposal um, was submitted to the European Union. So the Tropic Safe project came out of uh, a consortium of scientists coming together to work on a, on some specific topics that has economic importance um, for uh, specific crops, um, but also economic importance for crops in Europe as well. Um, so it's tropic safe. Uh, the start date was 2017, the end date was 21, 
um, for 30th. Uh, we subsequently got an extension um, because of COVID um, that had impeded some of our uh, research activities. And um, of course, the program is Horizon 2020. The key words, crop disease is uh, sustainable agriculture, pest and disease control, insect-borne disease, palm citrus, grapevine, climate change, ep epidemiology. And the location where most of the activities was executed, South Africa, Chile, Cuba, Guadeloupe, Mexico, Jamaica, Guyana. And the budget for this was approximately 3.9 uh, million um, euros. Uh, the project coordinator, the, so the coordination of the project was from the University of Bologna, um, Professor Assunta Bertassini. 22 partners from 12 different countries were involved in this uh, Tropisafe project. Um, those are the logos and, and, and names of the uh, respective partners that participated in this uh, consortium, including the Coconut Industry Board from Jamaica. And uh, all of these partners were given specific tasks within the, the Horizon 2020 project, uh, Tropic Safe project. And um, where you see the, the indicators there, for, for example, for CC, purely research, for the coconut industry board it was also research but there are other institutions that brought other things uh, to the table because uh, for example we were also looking at the socioeconomic impact of these diseases um, on on um, the rural population and also the farm farmers and farmers organizations so it's to generate new knowledge um, to reduce the environmental impact of control measures. And also, as I said, social, uh, the socioeconomic uh, factor was also taken into consideration. Um, specific objectives was to obtain um, uh, data and information on lethal yellow. Um, also the Holland Bing, which is citrus greening, grapevine yellows. So those were the three main um, diseases uh, we looked at in the project to generate new and deeper knowledge on epidemiological cycles and to study the disease more in depthly um, more deeply sorry and to develop advanced integrated pest management um, management systems that can help to to control the spread of the disease to allow farmers to be economically viable while um, doing their farming practices, develop rapid and reliable methods for detecting the pathogen, um, identifying insect vectors, which was important um, because these, these diseases are spread by insect vectors, um, to reduce the cost and environmental impact of phytosanitary, phytosanitary control. And of course, again, last but not least, but very importantly, the social, economic, or sustainability and impact of the disease within the respective areas. So um, the disease, diseases that we were looking at is classified into a, a large uh, category called insect-borne prokaryotes associated diseases. Um, the three main crops, of course, lethal yellow or, or three main crops would be palm, grapevine, and citrus. And the respective diseases, lethal yellow and yellows in grapevine, and the citrus greening in citrus. So those are the, the this, these the pictures here on your screen would be the effect of the disease on the respective um, crops in citrus greening um, devastation uh, of the citrus, um, and that is right across most of the citrus producing countries in the world, including um, Florida, Jamaica, and elsewhere. It's not yet in Spain, um, fortunately, but the, the vector, because we in Spain is actually in, involved in the consortium, we're able to identify the vector there. And therefore, I've identified the vector, knowing that you have the vector, you have to, you have to increase your, your um, quarantine measures to make sure that no infected material are actually coming into the country. 
um, coconut leech malaria, and of course, in, in the Caribbean and Africa, very devastating, and also in Florida. Um, and coconut leech malaria also affects other uh, palms as well, or 35 other palm species, ornamental palms, which is also very important. And of course, the I don't need to emphasize um, how important this is for my European colleagues. The grapevine yellows in, in, in Europe that would affect um, grapes and the whole industry of making wine. Uh, so our work plan uh, in, entails um, surveying and monitoring, um, making sure that disease, diseases of the tree crops were properly identified understanding how to do the identification and to apply uh, technologies, new technologies, um, some that we have innovatively um, validated and developed to identify uh, the various pathogens that are affecting these crops. Uh, but most importantly also the epide epidemiological and uh, biology of these biological attributes of these of these um, various uh, diseases um, and to develop a management strategy um, or strategies to, to to be able to control the spread of these um, diseases so that was the the work plan and the work plan was in various work packages uh, work packages one two uh, three four and five um after finishing our, our, our well we we understood that um in before the grant agreement was signed that um our work would have to be available uh through open access um so all of our work and you you know it's it's available um online uh and the people can go and look at it uh we the information we publish is actually available um, because we did all our publication as open access uh, because of the stipulation by the the European Union, the funder of the of the of the Tropicy project. And you have different open access. Um, you have the goal uh, open access. You have green open access, um, and um, all of these open access uh, were available to us. Uh, what when we are going to publish, we have to ask each consortium member uh, permission to to so publish the result uh, from the, the 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 consortium, and those permissions were generally given, and so we just went ahead um, with the various co-authors and publish uh, the, the respective work or results that we got from the research effort. I'll just go a little bit through that. Um, so this is the Excel sheet that is passed around for, for consortium members. You have to fill this, this sheet out, um, exactly stating who are the authors, where you intend to publish this, the result. Um, and, um, you know, and when the result is published, you update the form, the form that was given um, as to the volume, you know, uh, the pages in the in the in the in the um, the volume where the research was published, so that um, everyone, um, including consortium members, but people outside of the consortium who are just interested in uh, the research efforts, farmers who are interested in the results uh, from the research efforts, they will have access um, to the results. Um, our participation in the project, we did not receive, for example, um, a salary from the project, um, which I think was was good because um, mo the money was focused on actually doing the research work. Um, although um, we take all the persons in the project who give time to the project, that time was calculated. Um, and what do you give 70%, 50% or 30% of your time in terms of person month? Um, it was calculated because it has impact on the budget or, uh, um, of the project. Um, and uh, the, 
salary component was actually taken up as a counterpart uh, funding um, by the respective uh, uh, partners in the project. For example, Coconut Industry Board is the is my employer, and they are the one who pay uh, paid my salary, um, even during my work uh, with the project. So the money that we got from the project all went into research efforts um, to make sure that we could understand, in our case, the lethal alien disease correctly and properly, and to make sure that we have our farmers producing coconuts um, in a more sustained manner because of the research efforts. Um, intellectual property rights, um, that is something that has to be taken into consideration. Uh, and this is a part of the background that would be obtained before the signing of the grant agreement. Um, so each partner that comes to the project will have to declare um, a certain information um, that, so that it is understood by all the beneficiaries and that it will not impede the successful um, implementation of the project. So the lethal alien disease um, in the markets, this is some of the, 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 the pictures that we actually, that was obtained in the field and in, implying the, the research work uh, and, and some of the hard work that has to be done. For example, in this picture, you'll see me collecting insect vectors, um, potential vectors that has to be taken back to the lab for identification, uh, DNA extraction, uh, you know, using various molecular techniques to make sure we identify um, these 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 insects properly, um, and just to say, we have found um, new insects in this in this um, in this project. Uh, one such insect I found in in here in Jamaica at a place called Spring Garden. I named the insect Eclius uh, Marcus Springi. Um, it's a 66 such uh, insect uh, species in the world. Um, and uh, the impact of this insect is that it's also a carrier of the lethal alien phytoplasma, has the potential to transfer this phytoplasma to the to the to healthy um, coconut trees and cause a severe spread of the disease. Um, and so it was important for us uh, to identify these insects. Um, Africa, several work was also done um, using various um, techniques, the LAMP techniques, which, technique which was not used in Jamaica, but was used in Africa for disease identification. Um, that was also done, evaluation of varying types of uh, tolerant and resistant materials that has potential for coconut uh, um, growing countries is also evaluated in, in, in Guyana, sorry, not in Guyana, in Ghana, and um, in, in Mozambique, uh, the, the disease was, was, was devastating. And so some of the work was also done there as well. Um, in terms of uh, grape vine, work was done in Chile, um, in terms of transmission, uh, in transmission trials, identification of new vectors for, for, for um, phytoplasma and grapevines. Um, in South Africa, epidemiolo epidemiological cycles um, for the various um, um, insects, uh, uh, diseases and insects uh, was also uh, done. Um, those insects were, were positively identified. The phytoplasma associated with them was also known and uh, the publications uh, came out of all of these um, work. Um, in Italy, genotyping and sequencing to find molecular markers linked to resistance, a very important plant of understanding um, resistance in the various um, grape varieties that is in Europe. Again, uh, flavor doré, flavor since doré, and um, other type of, uh, of um, phytoplasma related um, diseases in grapes. So we obtain um, at the end of all of this research effort, um, we obtain updated data and information on lethal yellow and um, citrus greening, also grape vine yellows, diseases in the selected country. And we generated new and deeper knowledge of the epidemiology um, of the various diseases um, in 
the subtropical and tropical areas, understanding uh, the plant host of the disease and but also the insect vectors that actually carry the, the respective pathogens to the various healthy plants and produce uh, unhealthy plants. Um, we develop integrated pest management uh, in, in a very sustained way um, in Jamaica. The impact of this could be felt in the coconut growing areas um, where we actually reduce the lethal alien disease. Um, and it's the first time since the 1970s we have such a vast reduction of this disease um, where farmers now can grow the coconut uh, um, along with the disease without worrying about the disease uh, because they're able to um, use uh, some of the techniques that we have validated under the, the research efforts to make sure that they grow the, the, the plants um, uh, and, and, and of course um, be able to have a sustained livelihood. I think that was was very important achievement um, in this in this um, Horizon 2020 funded TropiSafe project. And we develop rapid and reliable methods of detecting the, 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 the disease, the disease pathogen, and identifying the vector. Um, also, we look at uh, in the whole integrated pest management uh, arrangement. We focus our attention on making sure that we were not focusing on, uh, for want of a better word, um, not focusing on using chemicals, dangerous chemicals to the environment. We'll focus our attention on the other side, how to use cultural and other practices that will enhance um, the management strategy but less harmful to the environment and having a, a, a better um, work crop, a market, um, market ready and market worthy crop uh, for our consumers. We evaluate the socioeconomic sustainability and feasibility of the new technologies, the integrated pest management um, strategies that we were, were using. And you know, um, this has to, has impact on the, of course, the, the livelihoods of people. Um, it's rural folks that are engaged, for example, here in Jamaica in coconut farming. Um, these farmers are actually having one to five uh, acres of land. Those are the small farmers, 95% of them are into coconuts. The larger farmers are about nearly 5% or so, 5% or so, but our main impact um, throughout, which I'm proud of, is actually impacting the life or the livelihoods of, of um, our small farmers here in Jamaica and the rural areas. Thank you very much uh, for your attention.